So I think the new business model for creators is a business model to attack the market with IP. Attack the market with IP. What is the business model for filmmakers today? The business model for filmmakers today is, it's a complicated question because the question could be, what should be the, the, the business model for filmmakers today? Or, or, but, but what is the, 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 the model for filmmakers today? I think still sits wholly in that traditional model of, you know, I got to go to the studio and I got to, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, option my option, my script and go through the development process and, you know, and, and go through that whole thing. There's the whole traditional side of the business that's still moving along. Uh, but now, on the outside of the studio system, then you're uh, you're looking at a, at a different business model that is is more IP focused. And I think if you if you really study the market and understand the way that the market works, it's about how do you launch and grow IP. And uh, be, and, and and this is this is not a new concept because we've known for decades that everything that we see in TV is always based on a book. And you know, it, even the the stuff that we know is the most original, we think is the most original stuff we've ever we've ever uh, uh, you know considered, and, and we we love the originality of this limited series or this interesting film. Ninety eight percent of the time, you trace it back, and it's based on a book. And the reason it's based on a book isn't because Hollywood's in love with books; it's because they love the pre awareness that the books bring. They love the community that's already built uh, uh, for the book, and it skews the risk analysis into the favor of the filmmaker when they say, hey, let's let's take this book and let's make it a movie. It's just a lower risk investment. And so, uh, so, so IP creation and establishing IP in the market is has has always been a thing and but now in the with the proliferation of other platforms and the 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 democratization of other platforms where normal people can have access to these other platforms such as podcast and uh webtoon and uh what short stories and wattpad uh, uh comic books things like that uh now the business model for creators is how to take their ip and attack the market in whatever platform they can so that they could establish a market presence, grow the community of that around that IP, actually get fans. And then once they have fans, then maybe down the road, they go and shop this thing for, for film and television. Uh, because when you do that, you can actually have a conversation uh, because you, you have something established in the market and you have fans and you've established pre-awareness. And I think pre-awareness is, 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 is vital in, in today's market because of the high risk ec economics of, of filmmaking. Because of the P and A budgets, because the budget, the, the the production budgets are, are are just increasing so much. I mean, you look at you look at uh, the Lord of the Rings series on Amazon. They spent two hundred fifty million dollars just for the rights, and then they spent four hundred fifty million dollars in production for one season of TV. And so you're they're spending three quarters of a billion dollars on a season of television. And so they're not going to do that with something that hasn't been established in the market. The only reason they're comfortable with, uh, with spending three quarters of a billion dollars is because Lord of the Rings is an established IP in the market and, that, and, and there's a legion of Tolkien fans and, and they've tested the, the, previous, the Hobbit movies and Lord of the Rings movies and, and, and it's been around for a zillion years and all of a sudden it skews the risk analysis into the favor of, of the studio. They say, I think we can do it. I mean, you look at the, the foundation series that's coming out on, on, on uh, Apple that Apple's releasing and uh, you know, that, that, that was a series of books that's been around forever. Uh, and, and a lot of people maybe won't know that and think, oh, this is just original filmmaking. No, it's established IP in the market. But, but used to, you could only, you know, the only way you could do that is through a book. But now, like I said, you can, you can do that in a variety of different ways. And so one of the most optioned things in Hollywood right now are podcasts. Podcasts are, are wildly popular as far as being optioned. And you look at uh, what Amazon did with Homecoming, uh, not Beyonce Homecoming, but the other Homecoming with Julia Roberts, uh, the, uh, the, the drama series, and that was a podcast. You look at something like Night Vale, that was a podcast. You look at what HBO Max, uh, they, uh, they greenlit the Calm app TV show. I don't know if anybody, you're familiar with the Calm app. The Calm app's been a top 10 app 
in the app store for the last 10 years is a meditation app. It's just a meditation app for that promotes uh, that promotes mental health and keep and makes you calm and helps you meditate. And HBO Max just greenlit a TV show based on the app, which makes no sense other than there's a brand there and there's a community there and there's pre-awareness in the market. They'll hire a writer and they'll hire producers and they'll hire talent that'll make it work. But what they were looking for is, is there the pre-awareness in the market? And you see something with Angry Birds. Angry Birds launched into the market, not as the animated films, launched into the market as a mobile game. And so I think that is the new business model for creators is how do I, how do I not wait for Netflix or Amazon or Universal Pictures or Disney to, to give me permission to make my dreams come true? I don't, I don't want to wait for Netflix to give me permission to tell the story that's in my heart. It, 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 you'll be waiting forever, right? And, 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 and you'll be deceived by the fact that there are some people that Netflix does come and make their dreams come true and they give them the big giant check. But, but for every one person that's waiting for that, that it actually works for, you know, there's, there's, you know, a hundred thousand people, hundred thousand filmmakers that, that never get that break. And it's not because they're less talented. It's just because it's a, it's a hard industry and it's competitive. And there's a lot of super talented people out there and it's tough to be able, and, and, and the line around Netflix is, you know, 10 blocks long, figuratively speaking, uh, with people that want to get in Netflix, right? So, so it's, it, you know, people are waiting for these studios to give them permission to, to follow their heart and tell their story when I say, that's that's cool, but don't wait. Or at least while you're waiting, attack the market. While you're waiting, launch your IP in the 10 or 15 or 20 ways that we have at your fingertips at all time that you can do for very little or zero money. Like, like you know, a podcast. You can you can take you can take your iPhone and you can download Anchor. And Anchor is is a free app on the App Store that will allow you to hold up the phone to your ear and it records your podcast in just into the phone. And then it distri- and you can put bumper music and you can edit it and then it distributes it into the the Apple Podcast Store and it puts it on Spotify all completely for free. And then you can use the di- the distribution platforms and social media and things like that to 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 get it in front of people, start building your audience and you can actually tell the story that you want to tell while you're waiting on Netflix. But the trick is then if you actually grow the community of people that that love your podcast, love your story, uh, and and you know are engaging with your brand, you've increased your chances from hearing from Netflix because you've actually created pre awareness of the market, right? And you you accelerate. I mean, I, there was there was a there was an IP that I had. Uh, uh, we 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 sold to, we sold to Fox. It languished in development. Went on the turnaround. We got it back and. Uh, it, it, we had played that game for seven years, trying to shop it, finally got it shopped, went into turnaround, got it back, seven years. And I thought, what would have happened if I would, we would have been running a podcast the entire time? What would have, been, what would have happened if I would, we would have had comic books in the market and released self-published novels into, into the market? Uh, we, we wouldn't, when it goes in the turnaround, we wouldn't be at zero again we would have had fans and we would have had a, a brand and we would have had IP. The film and television wouldn't have worked the way we wanted it to work and then we'd have to kind of reorganize that, but at least we would have done some other things and attack the market in a way and, and not just wait for a giant studio to give me a giant Ed McMahon check and say, I give you permission to tell the story that you've always wanted to tell. And it's, uh, so, so I'm very, very bullish on encouraging filmmakers, don't wait, launch, launch, launch. Use all the stuff that we have, all the tools in the toolbox to launch the IP. If you know, if you know uh, uh, people that can produce music, work with them to maybe tell a story through a song and launch that. Uh, if you know how to write a short story, launch, you know, launch that. If you know how to do a podcast, do it that way. Uh, do a webtoon. Do you know? Do do something, and uh, one, it it helps you not 
be frustrated as you wait to hear back from an agent and sending out query letters and the whole game that we all know, which is, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm saying, okay, let's do that. But while we do that, let's do some other things. So you're not just sitting around waiting to hear back from people. You're actually doing something, right? Which keeps you, it just keeps you happy as a storyteller to be able to tell your stories. I mean, I, you know, personally, I found myself years ago as a writer, the thing, the things that I wrote most were pitch decks. I found myself writing more pitch decks than I were than I, than I did scripts, and that was disconcerting to me, right? Because that's sort of the, what you kind of fall into in Hollywood is this crazy game of just trying to like hustle something, and 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 you're doing a lot less creating and just a lot more pitching, right? And so uh, so you know it, there, there's there's a I think there's an artistic and a soulful benefit to launching IP in the market. Just sat, it satisfies you as you wait for the, the the big guys to come and make your dreams come true. But then there's also a legal benefit to it. And so, you know, I consider myself a recovering lawyer. I started my career as a lawyer uh, uh, and almost completely recovered as a lawyer. But from a legal perspective, if, if you can establish an IP in the market, there's a lot greater chance of you getting a better deal on the back end if and when the studio comes and wants to participate in, into a feature film. If you just write a spec script, and you go and like like you know like filmmakers do and like writers do, and, and you go sell that spec script, and it's not based on any pre-existing IP. It's, it's just an original idea, and you sell you sell on spec. Say you get on the blacklist, and 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 they snatch it off the blacklist, and they 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 give you a deal. That's awesome. It's 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 by and large a wholesale acquisition. It's we're taking the whole bucket of rights, and we'll give you a check. That's a high five handoff that you know you you go off and you know we'll take this and we'll go and make this movie. But they have all the rights to every platform ever created and here forever to will be created until the end of time. There's all those big lawyerly clauses in there. They own everything, right? They take the whole deal. Theoretically, they give you a, a check to, to make you feel better about that, right? Which sometimes it, that makes you feel better, other times it doesn't. Um, but if you say publish a book, self publish a, a book, and and and, uh, and and that book sells, and you're able to then get that to be turned into a movie, the deal that is then done is a different deal. It's then you have uh, what's called a split rights deal, where they come and license the right to adapt the book into a movie, right? So they take the film and television rights. Right, but it's a license deal for the film and television rights, and you maintain your other IP rights, video game, comic books, merchant, you know, things like other things that you want to create, right? And uh, which is much better in success of the movie, right, or the or the TV show or whatever they do, then all these other rights become more valuable, and you've retained them simply because you were able to establish the IP in the market, and you didn't you didn't go to the studios first. Right, so so even if you don't want to talk about the uh, the, the uh, sort of the creative benefits of attacking the market and being aggressive with the IP and not waiting, right, and being passive, as as your fake lawyer, as for yeah, that that I would give you this this legal advice, never just sell a spec strip to a studio. It's crazy. Just publish it, self publish it as a book first. Now, ten years ago, before you could really self publish. Or no, there wasn't really podcast, and there weren't really uh, these other things. Then what? What are you supposed to do? The only thing you could do is is just sell it directly to a studio. There's not a lot, not a lot of other uh, other options, right? Now there are so many options. It's um, it, it makes it just doesn't make a lot of sense to be able to go to them first. You just you're just you're um, misappropriating and, and losing sight of the the broader opportunity of your IP. So so I think the new business model for creators is a business model to attack the market with IP. Attack the market with IP and when you when you generate the pre-awareness of the community, it's going to create residual benefits that is that are not only going to make you more attractive to the studios, but it's actually going to help you retain more and control more of the IP moving forward. And from what I understand about this new Netflix series Made yeah. with Margaret Qualley, um, it, it, it started as um, an article. Mm -hmm. A woman who was in a homeless shelter with her child, she was cleaning houses, and she kind of wrote this thing about, hey, what people don't know about what I know about you from cleaning your house. Sure. And that took off, and 
then she did this book yeah. and then and now and now we have this this show coming up and sure. I'm looking forward to seeing it and again that was someone that was always wanted to be a writer had a lot of tragic things happen and decided to hunker down and sort of make the best of it and look at now it's sure you know that that's a rags to riches story right there and it, and if she would have just written that as a spec script and then just started shopping that around I think we we would well, we wouldn't be having this conversation today because because it would have gotten it would be languishing in the crazy game that is the spec world of Hollywood, right? She she was able to take this and then launch it in a different way. Let's write the article. Let's let's do it. Let's, let's launch it in a different form. Let's then publish the book. Let's let's do it as a blog. Let's do something else, right? And and then we we grow awareness. We grow the pre awareness. We we we've we've actually established the IP in the market. And then guess what? Especially when it becomes popular, then uh, then then the studios want to get involved. And that deal, and I'm not privy to the, the, the specifics of the deal, but but I would guarantee that that deal that was made for that particular uh, that particular IP is a better deal than she would have got if she would have written the spec script and tried to sell that spec script first. I don't think she would have sold the spec script to begin with, but in the event that she would have. It would have been a worse deal than what she got now, simply because she was able to establish it in the market, right? But see, see, this is the interesting thing. It, it's it's a paradigm shift with with, with filmmakers. Typically, filmmakers uh, and, and 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 screenwriters and listen, I, I I include myself in this umbrella. So it, we 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 want to focus on filmmaking and screenwriting, and 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 we feel like if I just write my five pages a day, everything's going to work, and I don't want to learn how to do a podcast. Like that's not me. I don't want to learn how to make a website. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, uh, you know, write short stories. I, I'm a screenwriter, right? And 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 I wish I wish that person would have been born in 1978, and then you know was able to be able to operate in you know late 80s, 90s Hollywood because uh, because it was just as a different market, and you could kind of you know specialize like that. Um, but uh, but but it's just it's a different market, and and there's this this uh, there's this hesitancy, for lack of a better word, if if I say that euphemistically, there's this hesitancy to broaden your scope of creative to be able to launch an IP in the market. You feel like you're you're doing something that's less than screenwriting. You're lowering yourself to do a short story. You're lowering yourself to do a podcast. There's this this, you know, this this artistic judgment. And you feel like you, you and maybe you just judge yourself of, of like, man, that this means that I'm if I was good enough, I'd be able to sell this thing, right? And and you judge yourself for it. And and, and you shouldn't judge yourself for that. You, you like it's it's it, there's too much stuff out there and it's way too competitive and uh, I think if 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 creators and filmmakers and screenwriters if they had the mind of a of an entrepreneur who's who's launching a consumer brand you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna approach this whole thing differently because you talk to any entrepreneur that that says I'm gonna start a pizza shop right. Uh, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna open the pizza shop and, and, and it's gonna be great because I have this family recipe of pizza I've been working on. Uh, like they are forced to learn a hundred new skills in order to launch that pizza shop, right? You never hear somebody say, uh, "I'm gonna launch my pizza shop with my family recipe uh, of, of pizza, and I'm only going to focus on making the pizza." I'm not going to learn how to do payroll. I'm not going to learn how to hire front of house, back house. I'm not going to learn how to order. I'm not going to learn about management. I'm not going to learn how to do the register. I'm not going to learn about anything else other than pizza. And that's it. I'm just going to focus on my pizza. And as long as I make good pizza, everything will fall into place. Odds are that pizza shop will never open, right? Because of course, entrepreneurs know, I want to do a pizza shop. I know how to make a good pizza. Okay. I still have to learn how to run the register, and I still have to learn how to market the right way, and I still have to learn how to, you know, how 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 to manage my staff, and I still have to learn how to order all the food from the wholesalers and things like that. You, you, it, it, you're forced into figuring out five or six new things that you've never figured out before, and that's just part of being an entrepreneur. And every entrepreneur will tell you that, like you, you have to, you're forced to learn a hundred new things. What are those 10 new things that we need to learn as screenwriters and filmmakers? 
What are the 20 new things that, that, that we can learn uh, as creators that can help us launch the IP? And, and here's the good part. Here's the, here's the punchline that I think is the greatest punchline of all time. It's all there on the internet for free. YouTube is the greatest educational uh, platform in the history of mankind. If I wanna figure out how to change a 1987 Volvo station wagons carburetor, there's probably a YouTube video that's gonna walk me through it. Uh, we can it, it, go, to, go to YouTube, go to Google and say, how do, I, how do I create a podcast? And there's 17 articles instantly or 17 videos that pop up. You can go to LinkedIn Learning and, and, uh, uh, or, or you can go to you know, you know, whatever like a resource that you wanna use and you can take the seven to 10 to 27 hours to figure it out. And not only that, you can connect with people that know how to do it. I had a buddy who, he won the Nichols Fellowship as a screenwriter, right? Which is a big deal. Nichols is, is, is a very competitive um, uh, screenwriting competition. He won the Nichols Fellowship. He, he pitched a movie to Paramount Pictures as a result of winning the, 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 the Nichols Fellowship. He pitched the script to Paramount. Paramount said uh, it was too risky because it wasn't established in the marketplace. And they said, we want you to go and create a comic book and launch it as a comic book. And if you sell 10,000 copies of that comic book, come back to us and we'll make your movie. So he walked out of that meeting super bummed, not just because they didn't want to make the movie, but they said, make a comic book. And guess what? He was a screenwriter. He didn't know how to make a comic book, right? Which if this was 1992, that would have been a big bummer. But because it was 2017, he was able to go home, open up the laptop, Google, how do I make a comic book? And he started reading. And he started finding out where the artist hung out online and the artist communities and art station and deviant art and things like that. He, 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 he learned the production workflow, the cost of making a comic book, how they were distributed. He just started researching and he connected with an artist uh, in a, like Estonia or some Euro Eastern European country that, uh, that, that he, he, uh, they decided to collaborate on something. They, they scraped and put uh, one issue of a comic book together. It took them months. They put an issue of, one issue of a comic together and they, they distributed it digitally on Amazon and uh, made enough money from it to make an issue two. And then they made enough money on it to make an issue three. And then they made enough money on it to make an issue four. And then after issue four, guess what happened? They got picked up by a small independent publisher that said, we'll pay for the publishing of it, right? So they did issue five. And then after issue five, they're putting it all together as a trade paperback, all five issues together. And now, four years later, he's right on the verge of his 10,000 unit sale, right? And he says, Houston, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to Paramount Pictures and tell them to make my movie because I had to hit the $10,000 or the 10,000 sale mark, Right? But guess what? I'm not going to stop selling my comic book. Why? Because it's an extra source of revenue for me. And I have a community of fans that love this stuff. Right? So why would I stop? And so now he self-identifies as not just a screenwriter, but he's a screenwriter slash comic book creator. Right? He's, you know, there's, there's, this, there's this, uh, this term called polymath, right? People that are good at multiple things. And uh, we, we typically laud people in entertainment that can do more, right? Beyonce uh, can sing and she can dance and J-Lo can act and sing and dance. And, and we always say, all oh, these people are amazing. They're entrepreneurs and actors and singers and creators. And, you know, and we love that about people. We need to start looking at ourselves as that because we have the ability to do that and because all the tools are in front of us. So I think that's the model that we have to hit is, is being willing to have that mindset shift of, I need to learn some more. I need to broaden my own skill set, right? And but when I do, it's going to open up a new world for me because I'm able to establish my IP, my IP in the market.